So um, this presentation is the same presentation I did, a similar, very similar presentation I did at Tech Dive USA earlier this year. They did a video recording of it, and it's available online um, to watch a version of it uh, through it. So some of you may have already seen it, um, seen portions of it. I've added some new data, so there is some new information for those of you who have seen it. Um, so we got a little bit of more information on it. Uh, but it's available totally online, so if you're sitting there and you want to scribble down numbers, and this is a number and that number, it's all available there already. Okay, so you don't have to scribble that much. That's the reason why I tell you. Just go to our website, tdisdi.com, go to our video channel or one of our blogs, and you'll find it there. So, <clears throat> I was, um, uh, this presentation came to me as an idea um, a couple, about a year and a half ago. And the, re well, the big reason why I came was a conference I went to. But before I get started, a little bit about me. Um, I've been in the diving industry for 26 years. That's a long time. <laughs> it's actually a little bit longer than that now. I've spent educating divers. And one of the things that we never uh, have seen in the diving industry is everybody talks about how big it is and how, how much growth there is. And this segment's growing and that segment's growing. Well, I have a unique perspective because I can see the actual numbers and know. And we finally got to the point where we said, well, the industry isn't going to grow until we start talking to each other realistically. So that's why we went ahead and we released the actual, we're releasing the actual certification numbers. These are true numbers, they're global numbers. The reason why we're doing it is that somebody asked me to. So I figured we'd answer with the real information. The conference I went to a year and a half ago was not a diving conference. <clears throat> it was a marketing conference. I just came back last week. I went to another marketing conference outside the diving industry. Um, first one was called Content Marketing Worldwide. The next one, the one I went to last week was called Inbound Marketing. The way we're talking to consumers today and communicating is totally different than what we did 10 years ago and how consumers get their information. And it's all about building trust, okay? So the intention of this is to start to build the trust amongst the diving industry so that can, we can have some serious conversations and actually grow it. Because the statistics show it's not growing. So it's all about trust. And it comes down to a concept. They ask, you answer. It's that easy. You may not like the answer. But if I ask a question, I want a real answer. I don't want this car salesman's answer. And we've been doing too much of the car salesman in answers in the diving industry. So that concept was given to us, and the reasonings behind it was one big reason, and it builds trust. And you can't grow anything without trust. So they ask, you answer, is what came out of this conversation. The next thing we did was we wanted to be insanely, insanely honest within the diving industry, okay? Came out of this conference as well. If we tell people the way it is, we talk to them about what's real and what's not real, it builds trust people more willing to do business with SDI, TDI in the end, which is you know, a goal of ours, obviously. But we want people to do business with people within the diving industry. That's attracting outside money to help us with advertising. And when you talk amongst us, we can't get some real information. <clears throat> Reason why we do this, it surprises people, it delights, signals confidence, it builds trust, it alienates less, bu uh, less likely buyers, it attracts ideal prospects, and it focuses on the battles you can win. Okay? This is the marketing element of my presentation before I get to the data. All right? And the data is all driven behind this. Let's look at some of the certifications we've been asked. What's the most popular course? Where's technical, is technical diving growing? Which rebreather do instructors teach most? By the end of this presentation, you will know the answers to those questions. Okay. I hold the rebreather one off until the end. I'm going to keep you hanging by the, okay. So, and I've got new data on rebreathers, Jason. So, uh, you know, I knew that the, I'd hold that last one towards the end. Okay. All certifications are processed via our global database. Meaning, if an instructor registers a student in Thailand today, I will know it comes up in our system. Everybody is networked into one central database. If um, uh, if an instructor in Washington qualifies in a new instructor trainer qualifies a new instructor um, from Canada and the instructor trainer is in Thailand, it's registered all through the same system, all in real time. So when you're doing your online registrations on it, it's all live. 
Right then and there, we have access to the data. And every office and every instructor in the world is tied into this. We don't have, we're not importing spreadsheets or anything like that. So the data, I want to tell you, is really good data. All, um, the system, and the system's been put in place since 2011. That's important because my data, the hard data, starts from 2011. I know I've got really good numbers from 2011 on. Okay? We group the certifications into a couple different categories for it. I did open circuit. Open circuit includes all those courses there. And then I did overhead, and that includes both open circuit and CCR. So you can get an idea. So um, uh, intro, cavern, whether you're doing it on open circuit or ca uh, CCR, Unix specific, we will, um, you'll have those numbers. The next one, service courses. Blender, advanced blender, O2 service technician, manuf manufacturer specific courses, group this data in there, CCR and SCR. They're all Unix specifics in four different courses. Those are the four categories that are grouped all this in. Once again, I tell you these numbers are global, okay? I do have the ability to show going um, uh, in, in by region. But these are the total certifications done from 2008 to 2015. No, for TDI. Globally. In 2015, we did 13,017 instructors, or divers, certifications. Globally, TDI. Okay? People go to me, why did you have a spike in 2011? That's the, what's the anom anomaly in that particular data. In 2011, there was a training organization that was going through a very difficult time, and you couldn't get your certifications processed through them. So the instructors, who happened to be instructors of ours also, all started doing their certifications with us. So there was that blip in it. So I got a good idea on what their total certification data was um, at that time. Open circuit courses, of those 13,000, this is from 2012 on, 9,000 of those were open circuit. So out of the 12,000 that there were there, 9,000, approximately three quarters of it, was open circuit. Uh-oh, what's he saying? How big is this technical diving market? The top 10 TDI open, uh, open circuit classes, by far nitrox and advanced nitrox, and, de and deco follows in. All those other ones in there, really, really small. Advanced tri Trimix, 1,100 people got certification in that. Globally, I don't even know how, was it four, five billion people on the planet? You're unique if you've got that. Okay. Overhead search. 1,500 done in 2015. Slightly more, slightly more than 2014. Global. Okay. This includes CCR and open circuit. By far, the most popular in that date range was 1600, cavern, intro, full cave. See the CCR full cave? Well, I didn't even put in. CCR full cave, 67. Intro to cave, 43. Not a whole lot of numbers there. Service courses, 722. How many people are doing um, uh, O2 service cleaning? How many of you took a class? It's kind of like VIPs, okay, visual inspection courses. You learn how to do it right there on the spot. You never get a qualification. Well, that's okay if you never have an issue. If you do have an issue, you got a big, big, big problem. Okay, but so you can see what the numbers are there. Nitrox gas blender, most popular, Banks gas blender. in that date range, a four-year date range. TDI rebreather model is in the last five years. 
These are the, all the courses that we've done. Certifications uh, have some type of certification. Some we still do, some we still don't. So um, these are all the qualified ones. I don't know if we're adding any more to this list after the show. Typically, we come out of the show and somebody says, oh, do a rebreather class on this. So this new rebreather mark came into the market, and you need to change this. You need to change that, add this program. We have a specific pro uh, procedure we go through for adding it. Uh, these things, first off, anybody asks, you know, asks us, how do we add in a rebreather into our curriculum? They've got to be able to provide us with a, a, um, a, a manufacturer's manual. You wouldn't believe a lot of these people don't have manufacturer's manuals. They then have to provide us some type of either um, product liability insurance or they have the means to handle litigation when it happens. So they have to have some sort of asset that can be attached for a litigation at that time. And then we put a stipulation in it. You have to show us that you can produce more than 50. <sighs> okay? So I cannot tell you how many times we've been approached. You need to write a course. This is going to be the greatest thing. CCR, okay. How many are, you know, how, what, hey, what do you got going on? Well, I'm designing it in my garage right now, but I need TDI to write a course for it. Okay, I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. So total certification CCR and SCR since 2015. 1,500 total certifications. That includes all four types of courses, Airdale, mixed, deco to Airdale, Air, mixed gas, advanced mixed gas. 1,500 divers. You've got five, uh, 215 um, C, uh, SCR. In the SCR, the reason why you're seeing that is the Hollis Explorer rebreather. That's where the numbers are moving up, okay? If you look at the numbers in the data, you can get a really good idea of just how many units are being sold. The top 10 TDI certifications for CCR by manufacturers since 2012 to 2015. 1,600 by AP. That includes all their models. Okay? Hollis 912. That, a large chunk of that is uh, Explorer, and then ISC, Poseidon, Revo, K JJ, KISS, SF2, DiveRight, and Submatix. That's a four-year run. So then I went, oh, you know, as I was running this data, I go, okay, that's four years of data. Um, what's the most popular now? So I went ahead and I went and we did the data. We did it in 2015. Now when I ran these numbers, I was beginning. So it changed a little bit. And I plan on doing this again and again and again and again and again and again. And you're going to see another slide that shows the 2016 numbers in just a minute. Okay? But you can see what's going on. You've seen um, the difference between the two. You, the major changes, we saw JJ move up the list. Um, you saw SF2 move up the list. And um, dive right moved down the list. Poseidon moved down the list. Okay, so um, you get an idea on who's doing what from a qualification standpoint. Now, in 2016, come on, JJ moved way up. Okay, Hollis maintained. ISC maintained. SF2, Poseidon, Revo, Liberty, Titan, Dive Right. Okay? So you get an idea of what the most popular courses for it uh, under the TDI brand are. Open circuit versus closed circuit re di for the last, this is the last, uh, this was the last uh, four years. This is a four year run. Okay? for each year. So 10,000 of them uh, open circuit, 1,800, almost 1,850, closed circuit in 2015. Pretty interesting. So 20% of the total technical diving market is CCR or SCR, 20%. Remember that number. And that's been pretty consistent, okay? If I go back, all the way back to 2000, if I go, I have data back all the way back to 1994, 
Um, the number of total certifications on CCR is not at its peak now, right now. It's, it was at its peak right in 1996 and 97 when the Atlantis Dragger rebreather came out. That was the peak of uh, all CCRs. By, and I think there was like 6,000 certifications done in like a two year period, okay? People go, oh, the CCR market's exploding. Oh, it's coming back. Hasn't been there. We need a little bit more competition. Technology is definitely better. But the peak was back then, which I want to get beyond. And I got some ideas on how we're going to do that. Okay, so total of 18% in 2015 compared to 82. You have to do advanced nitrox and deco classes in order to feed your um, CCR market. That's what we can see from this data. You've got to be teaching those courses. Total distribution of all the types of TDI courses, 71% open circuit, 13 CCR, overhead 11, service courses 5. I'll be happy to go back to any one of these slides as I move through this because I'm moving <laughs> pretty quick here you can, on some of the data. We can talk a little bit more about it. Okay. Now, there's a problems with our data, and I recognize this absolutely. First of all, I'm only showing you TDI numbers as the agency. It's only our numbers. So there's a ton of other agencies out there. What are their data and what are their numbers? I don't know. They don't share that information with me. So I realize that that's a problem with our data. Some manufacturers work with other agencies. A perfect example of this will be dive right in um, uh, a dive right in the um, Optima Rebreather. I know a large certification numbers of Optima Rebreather are done through INTD. Okay, so I recognize that that when I put dive right down there at number ten, that's not the real. They do more than that. Okay, but what that is, I don't know. Have INTD give their numbers up? Okay, and we'll have a better idea. So there's some statistical problems with our data. In some cases, it's only really a small sample size. So I know that we need more information. What I found interesting, and the reason why, and I saw this uh, two years ago, was I wanted to compare how big the technical diving market is to how many open water divers are being qualified every year to see if there was any correlation. Now, DEMA puts together a certification census in which us, uh, SSI and Patty give them the name, first name, last name, date of birth, and zip code of every open water diver we qualify within the United States territories. And we do it on a quarterly basis. This data is available through DEMA um, at any time to any DEMA member, and there's a, you can look back at, uh, for the United States. It's good information, to, and it does it by territory. But what I saw in this information, people said, oh, the open water market's growing. The, everything's growing. The diving industry is growing. That's the real data between four organizations, or three organizations, OK? That's only the United States. I realize that. But when you're looking at statistics, you get a pretty good idea if you get a big enough sample size. This is a big enough sample size for us to say, what's going on? So if you look at it, we had a peak, and then it fell off again. It's coming back up a little bit. The numbers are trending a little bit back up, but they're not trending up like we could see we've heard it happened in the 90s. OK? So I took this data, and then I went, well, I want to see how TDI compares to that. And I added the TDI numbers to it. And here's something funny. Have I got a, a, is it the button? Where's the laser? Did I get a laser on this? There we go. If you looked at the, the slope, see the slope, peak? We have the same slope here. So what does that tell me? We're pretty close to knowing the real information. If the open water numbers go up, the technical numbers go up. If the open water numbers go down, the technical numbers go down. OK? Just looking at the data. This is the realities. The TDI um, market size has remained consistent for the last 10 years. 
how long have we been coming to these trade shows and everything and saying technical diving is booming? It's the latest and greatest thing. It's pretty much the same, okay? Yes, that's a sorry thing to say. I want to be positive. It's my job to stand up here and say, TDI, go start, do more TDI courses and tech courses. But the reality is, it's not moving where we want to. So in order to have an impact on change, we've got to talk about it and show people what it is. CCR courses are replacing some of the traditional open circuit courses, but there's still a market segment there. Okay? It's not replacing all of it. Until CCRs can become mainstream production and they can get out a lot more of them and they become, um, they're making extreme advances in the last five years. I've seen some amazing stuff, but for the end user, we're not going to see a spike. And then when we do see a spike, it's not going to be that big. It's not going to replace open water diving. Okay? Both no total numbers are not increasing. So what do we do about this? In order for the technical diving market to grow, the open circuit market needs to grow. How many of you are open water diving instructors? How many of you are technical instructors? Okay. The technical instructors in the diving industry have the most knowledge and experience to sell and teach and promote people doing open circuit. You want to grow your technical, uh, you want to grow technical diving in your uh, facility or dive center? Train your people on how to sell more open water. For every 10 divers you get in open circuit, you can get two out of technical. That's what it is. So you're going to get 10 for two, or one out of five. Probably could have done it that way better. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but you want two, don't you? You know, 10 for two, that's a little bit bigger number. <laughs> Tell your staff 10 for two, OK? Um, dive shows like this. Um, one will help promote the sport, but we need to reach more outreach outside of our industry. So how do we do this? How do we reach outside the industry? Well, here's the issue. And this is the outreach. And I'm seeing this throughout. I'm seeing it today on the trade show and everything like that and stuff. The diving industry does not know how to market to today's buyer. So bottom line, we don't know how to do it. I will tell you, we changed what we started doing about four years ago. I hired a marketing expert outside the diving industry to come in and tell me what we're doing wrong. And he looked at us and said, oh, you're doing all this wrong, and I'll show you. Okay? To give you an example of some of the things that we have done differently, I have the opportunity to spend $5,000 and go to a tra trade show. If we go to a local trade show like Long, Long Beach or we go to uh, Beneath the Sea or something, it's about five grand is what it costs. I go into our sales guy and say, we've got five grand over here. I go into the marketing guy and say, we've got five grand. What do we want to spell it? Send it. The sales guy goes, oh, we've got to go to the trade show. We've got to do it. We've got to, this is what everybody's going to do. These organizations are there. All our retailers are coming. I'm like, OK, we've got to go do this. Then he comes in. My marketing guy goes, well, if you give me $5,000, I'll make it twenty five. dollars What? <laughs> You'll turn $5,000 into $25,000? Yeah, give me the money. I'll market it and do direct content marketing, direct your customers, which will result in direct sales. And it'll be outside the diving industry. And it works. How many of you have bought a car recently? Did you walk into the car dealership and say, tell me about what kind of cars you're going to sell me? No, you went online, you figured out everything associated with buying that car, you knew exactly what the features were, what the prices were, what you're going to do, what type of warranty they're going to have. You had all the information before you even picked the dealer, which you found online based on recommendations from looking online. You knew everything about the purchasing process before you walked in. So when you walked into that car dealership, what did that car salesman need to do? Get me a car, tell me the price, make this process easy, I got 10 minutes. Don't sell me, I know what I want, I want blue. You don't have blue, I'm gone. <laughs> All right? They have to facilitate it. 70% of purchasing decisions are made before anybody talks to another person. 70%. How are they getting that information? If you don't have a very good website, if you don't work on making your website known by adding relevant content of the questions your, your students are asking you and writing about those answers on your website, you're losing business. 
70% of your business. Okay? So, what does the diving industry need to do? The diving industry needs to go to the conferences I'm going to and listen to the people who tell me we're doing it all wrong. Okay? Um, and if you want another opinion on how these things work, go to Dive Right. They joined us at this, week, at this conference last week, and I totally messed with Jared Hires' mind. He's now changing everything he's doing and going to start going in this direction. So um, we have to start marketing and talking to it. And if you want to market and talk to open water divers, you need to write about these things on your store, create a blog, and get a regular process. You're all in our newsletters. You've seen our newsletters. That is a long-term strategy. Yes, we put out a story this week. Uh, we put out stories, um, different stories, and sometimes our stories will go through the roof. Sean talked in the last seminar about the equivalency chart of dive certification agencies, the equivalency TDI courses. That is actually ranking within uh, equivalencies in Google searches very high. They go to ours, they find out the information. Uh, other training agencies have linked to our page, okay, to get the information out there. Why? Because people want to know what the equivalencies are. So they're going to figure it out on their own. Somebody said, what are the equivalencies? We said, oh, let's write about it. Put it online. This past year, we wrote an article about how to use a condom catheter. Did you guys see that one? Nobody's ever written about that. Guess what? That we're the resource of that information. Well, as soon as we wrote that, they asked, well, what do females do? Well, we had to write about that. So if you get asked a question, answer it in a blog and put it on your website. That's where they're going to get the information. And if they find the information from you or from us, from in the diving industry, they're going to trust us more. All we've got to do is work on making the process there. Technical diving, only outreach right now outside the industry is news, fatalities, and shipwreck at dive shows. That's it. That's what our outreach is. I am seeing some like insurance or Hilton commercials now recently or something like that that have got diving, which is pretty cool. Anytime it's diving, you know, somebody else uses that at school as long as it is in fatalities. But if you don't have gl glory, we're not, we're not trending with anything. So we have to be responsible for putting out all this information. So, my hope, why did we do this? We need to be open to one another to share the real data so we can track how, um, how it works. Everything these days is analytics. You can get so much information from what people are looking for and how they're searching for it just by going online. We did a direct email, a direct campaign on our Facebook page this past year. We went to this dive show, um, FDIC which is the firemen, uh, big fire trade show in Indianapolis. And beforehand, we went in, I think we spent, it was like $500 on an ad on Facebook. And for that ad, we, we chose how we were going to make it, where it was going to show up. We only wanted it to show up on chiefs, of, chief, uh, chiefs, fire chiefs, who were attending the Indianapolis show that liked diving. Really down. And we put in the ad, if you see this ad and come, come to see us at booth whatever, and we'll be happy to give you free public safety materials. We had 10 people walk into our booth. Before we went to that show, I said we're going to drop out of it. When 10 people showed up, chiefs of police, somebody who's going to make purchases, somebody who's interested in the RDI, somebody who's diving. I got 10 leads right there. That's hot. I don't have to weed through and find out. We booked two booths for next year, just based on that. Okay, the marketing seminars that Darren is doing here, a lot of these talk these and these specifics. Okay, so we need to be open we need, um, and, uh, and understand this. We can't grow, we can't understand the grow without knowing where we are and where we've been. My hope is other people will follow this. This has been out for about six months. I haven't seen any information. I hope it doesn't die on the vine. We're going to continue to pump out the data and do this type of stuff so that we can be that information source. But if INTD, if Patty, if anybody else wants to throw some certification numbers and combine our data, I'm happy to be there. I'm happy to find a way for the industry to track this on it so we can get some real better information. It has facilitated a lot more communication, I will tell you this. When we released the certification numbers specifically for CCRs, <clears throat> the, 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 um, 
the, a lot of the manufacturers came up to us and said, thank you very much. I know I'm low on the totem pole, but I needed this information out there. I know what the challenges are I have now. I know how big it could potentially get. So I know how much money I should put into doing and trying to sell these things. I know how I can target and be more, uh, more efficient. Because what's the one thing we don't have a, a, fi a, a total amount of, we just, what's the one limitation we have on? Time. Okay, it's no money, it's time. Questions, tear me apart with the data. What's wrong? <laughs> what, do you, what else would you like to know? I came in and you were showing the manufacturers. Which, uh, let me see. All of this data is available online through our, um, no, not that one. Oh, good. Those are, that's just this year in 2016, and that's not a full year's data. So, and that was up until about a week ago. So, I came to this briefing because we are thinking of adding technical to our shop. It's kind of scary. For the investment, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we've got an SBI instructor that we're going to convert over to a TDI because he's Tech 50 patty. And we want him to do PDF. I'm wondering how big of an investment I need to make and all that kind of stuff. Is there somebody that I can sit down and talk with on a sidebar? Yeah, absolutely. We can talk to you and help you out with that. Okay. There's no problem helping you out. The thing about having technical diving in your store, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from doing it. quite the contrary. What you should um, uh, what you should realize is the technical diver is going to spend ten grand, and an open water diver is going to spend fifteen hundred. Oh, I know that. So you know that kind of outweighs <laughs> a lot of it. Um, but if you have ten tech stores within a ten mile radius, you better be producing open water divers and doing your best to keep them involved in there. You know, um, going the route of just a tech store can be very difficult. Oh, we're not doing just tech. No, yeah. we're, it's going to be. Well, we actually threw out some pretty big visions on, you know, what we could be, and, and I don't want to blurt them out right here, right now. But. Oh, come on. <laughs> here, speaking to this microphone. <laughs> well, somebody else might, I don't think. Uh, they asked you answer, you know, come on, follow the lead. <laughs> so, question. I know that INTD was thinking about it, but they're having trouble pulling their data together. Okay, so there were some, uh, whether other agencies were gonna pull up, put out their data. I know INTD was interested in doing it. Andy, Andy and INTD, a couple of years ago, we released um, our numbers at RF3. Um, and I was really happy that uh, Tom and Ed, we came together over a whole bunch of conference calls. It, it started all right, then it went downhill, then it got back together, and, uh, but we were able to put out some good information of, is that total CCR divers? Yeah, it was total CCR divers certified between all three of us during that, um, during that time period. So um, I, I, would in, I would think we're going to see some more sharing of it. Um, DEMA hasn't said that they're going to try to pull us together yet and do a certification. That, um, there's, a, there's an actual a data bureau we report to on a quarterly basis. Cost money for DEMA. Uh, if DEMA were willing to get together and do that, I don't know how much money they would or how much more money it would cost, but that would be a great way to facilitate it. Uh, if anybody has any influences with DEMA, please say, hey, this would be a great idea. Um, you know, it, we need to start a wave of that uh, from there. Uh, now he's expressed some interest in doing some things, but I don't know, I don't know if they're going to come along um, and do this. So, see, the problem is if somebody comes out and says, puts out their data and says, we certified 20,000 CCR divers last year. And they go, wait a second, TDI did 1,800. Huh? How does that work? Okay, market size, market penetration of where you are. I'm, I'm not gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna say we're the smallest uh, from a training organization, but I know we have a good market portion of the marketplace. So now that I've put these numbers out there, you can't. There was some data that was put out a couple of years ago that um, um, there, was, uh, there was a prediction that Patty was going to certify 50,000 CCR divers in three years. Came out of right around three, came out of about RF3. 
They were doing a ton of PR, a ton of promotion about how CCRs were going to go. Poseidon was behind it. Everything went on. Um, we got some phone calls saying, do you think this is real through data companies? I said, uh, no. And that was the reason we put out the numbers at RF3 to show this isn't going to work. The whole reason that happened was because they were trying to sell it to the venture capitalist group and they're pumping the numbers up. So it was marketing. But what ended up happening is the manufacturers started ramping up and investing on products and stuff like that. And then when the market never came, some manuf they're still struggling trying to dig out of it, some of them. So, you know, I understand pumping things up, but it was, you know, the, the whole, we've got to be honest with what's really going on here. But your numbers here, how many are reaching, like, let's say, you guys are doing deals, and then next week you use triangles, and then the next quarter, fall in the eight weeks of value, you run that filter in there? I can run that filter. I could get that information. For you, I, and I'm trying to recollect when I was going back through numbers. I want to, if we're talking CCR, I want to say, I want to say almost all of the advanced mixed gas were repeat somewhere along the way. Um, so, and then a portion of the, a portion of the other ones were crossovers or things like that. So. so I, all of the advanced mixed gas, which would probably be of the total CCRs, I don't know, have that data broken down. Um, I think it was about 10% of the entry level CCRs went all the way on. So it gets really, really, really small. So. I was actually going to ask a sort of related question is how many people are you seeing transition from open circuit tech to CCR versus people going just straight from kind of recreational straight to CCR? I don't know. I don't know if my data would be any good coming out. And the reason is, is I don't know where they're coming from. I know coming in ours, if I were to look at the data, if somebody took an open circuit, like an SDI course, did they go right into closed circuit TDI? Or T <coughs> closed? I could do figure out that data. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I don't have that information. That's a good question. I, I think I'm going to try to figure that one out. I think that's a really great question. I think the future in 10 years' time, that will be really important data to have. Because as the technology gets better at the manufacturing, it comes down in price. And is open to more people, it's more accessible from a financial point of view. That's going to be really important. You said that 10 years ago, and I haven't been impressed on that. It hasn't yet, exactly. It's been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. I, I, I thought the Hollis Explorer has a shot. I still think they have a shot at going that direction. Um, um, but how many in your own Hollis Explorers and dive it all the time? Is there a rebreather of choice? Okay, so you know, uh, you, you, you kind of go, okay, what are we going to use? How are we going to use it? And how many of you own Prism 2s? How many of you, you, you know, um, SF2s? So, you know, the high end rebreathers. Oh, yeah, I got one of those. I got three of those, you know, two of those. What we are diving is what the divers are seeing us use. So if we use a $10,000 rebreather on our back, they're going to go, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to commit on open water. They see a $5,000 rebreather. Wait a second, that's not as much reach. So it's how we sell it and promote it ourselves. Now, if we're diving for ourselves and we're having fun and we're doing our own expedition type stuff, yeah, of course. But we're always representatives of the diving industry. Who's around you doing what? They, people want to, people want to mirror, uh, watch what we're, use what we're using and dive what we're using. Yeah. I could find out that information by, or what the total numbers are, but um, I didn't do a cross comparison of dupes through it. So the data is there, though. I mean, it, 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 I would say that the total, it's, if we're doing 10,000 certs, there's not 10,000 new tech divers in that. There's more like probably six, probably 7,000. Okay? That probably, so I would, and that's a guess just based on what I'm looking at right now. There's a lot of dual certs, like Advanced Nitrox Deco, that's a lot of dual cert. Those courses are taught in conjunction quite a bit. So, 
but we count them separately. Other questions? You actually mentioned before that in terms of sort of repeat customers or people who are sort of continuing along up the, the ladder, so to speak. Is there, uh, that's the way to say it, like, is there a line like to say advanced night tracks you go, 25% of those will go to normoxic and then only 25% of those will go to like Hang on, I'm getting there. Through the slides you can get your own. I only showed it there, but the data is Can you do it this way? No. Hang on. This one. This one. There you go. The actual numbers are right here. So you can find out those three and then add all these. All these don't even add up to that. Well, there may be 7,000. So you can see. But in terms of repeat customers? As far as repeat customers, I would have to see what the dupes are. I'm going to probably say it's around seven. If there's 10,000 here, there's probably 7,000, 30% of them are repeat, somewhere along the way, repeating some course. And a large portion of that is because of uh, these two numbers. It, that number might be higher now that I'm thinking about it um, for this. The TDI Nitrox number is kind of a standalone number. What we see coming into TDI a lot now, um, we used to be the TDI number, the Nitrox numbers used to be the gateway entry into TDI. We're seeing more of advanced Nitrox and DECO as being the gateway because people are getting basic Nitrox certifications in any organization. With SDI, we have a, a Nitrox program, so they'll take the SDI Nitrox and then jump into advanced Nitrox DECO. So that's kind of becoming the entry in. So if somebody takes TDI Nitrox, generally they're just like, okay, I'm going to take this class, and then they stop at that point. We don't know if they're, how they're going to jump. So. Which one? Yeah. Yeah. There's not enough people putting out promotion to it. It's what that means. There are just not enough people promoting and pushing that into the course. So um, that's all I can. So when when we look at uh, when we look at you know we put together this program because a bunch of people said oh it's gonna be the latest and greatest thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now you understand when you guys ask questions to me, uh, I don't know if we should do that. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, bene the one thing we are seeing is the mixed gas, advanced mixed gas CCR numbers have grown while the advanced nitrox open circuit uh, numbers, uh, advanced trimix open circuit have started to decline a little bit. Okay, cost of helium, okay? You know, it's cheaper, you're gonna do those types of dives, it's cheaper to dive on a rebreather than it is to dive on a, ugh, carry all that gas and blow it away. So um, from a financial standpoint, we are seeing that, okay? Any other questions? No other questions. We got a whole bunch of other great seminars going on.